Um, our next speaker is Guo Ha Li. He is the Finister Professor of Epidemiology and the founding director of the Center for Injury, Epidemiology, and Prevention at Columbia University. He's going to be talking about the long road study design and methods. Good morning. And I want to thank Dr. David Eby and Dr. Nisa Mola and Beth, um, Jack Bosky for organizing this very important uh, symposium. And actually, the first um, uh, session, um, the speech given by the Vice President for Research, Dr. Jackie Hu, actually gave me some very important um, uh, information, especially about MQ. Afterwards, I chatted with him briefly because I wanted to know more about um, that program. And also, I congratulated him for um, being selected as the number one, the best uh, public university uh, in the country, and he was very, very thrilled. And that's the U.S. News uh, new ranking released uh, two days ago, I think. And I think that program may have something to do with the MQ. I thought it's a very clever uh, program. I'm going to give you an overview of this. Uh, so-called non-road project. It's a long-term project. Um, it's a non-road. Whenever you take on a project like this, the first thing you need to do um, is to come up with an uh, acronym. And uh, it took us a few years, actually, to settle down on this non-road. It was a democratic process, and the winning entry was by, submitted by Dr. David Strogates, and it was voted uh, by the investigators. And the second thing you need to do is to set up a website for the project. And here is the website, uh, www.nonroadstudy.org. And if you go to the website, there are a lot of uh, reports um, produced by the team and also related project information. And this project um, grew out of this initiative, um, Senior Driver Initiative, launched um, in 2012 by the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety. And as the brainchild of uh, Dr. Jörg Grabowski, who is sitting actually in the audience, Jörg, you just wait. Um, uh, Dr. Grabowski is the uh, director of research of the foundation. And the stated mission of um, this initiative uh, is to understand and meet the safety and the mobility needs of today's and tomorrow's old drivers. That's a very ambitious mission. And uh, as I mentioned, the initiative um, was launched late and in 2012, and the RFA was issued in October that year, and, uh, and I heard, I was told by Dr. Grabowski, they received about 28 proposals. Um, instead of selecting one, they selected three, and including the one submitted by Columbia, and the one by University of Michigan, and then the one by Urban Institute. And it took us two years to marry the three proposals to create the non-road project. And also to work out nitty gritty details, basically the many of procedures, and also pilot testing and so on. Now we are in the third year of the project, it's really in the middle of enrollment. And enrollment is always the most challenging and most difficult part. And I'll show you some progress. And so this is the diagram created actually by Dr. Grabowski after maybe a year or so meetings um, of the three um, teams, basically, selected to participate in this project. Um, there are a, a lot of, I guess, important data in this diagram, but I don't have time to go through the details, but I uh, have designed the different uh, uh, functions, responsibilities, and how the team and the project will be governed, and so on. And one important decision through those meetings is to select or enroll participants through clinics or networks of clinics, rather than 
through random, uh, random dining sort of um, approach. And here is the governing sort of uh, structure. Um, basically, the function, the operation of the project is um, managed by the steering committee consisting of um, the PIs under uh, Dr. Grabowski, who is uh, the program officer. And uh, the foundation also formed an advisory committee that has convened once, and I think maybe has another meeting um, scheduled in the coming month to support the steering committee in decision making. And to achieve the stated mission of the senior draft initiative of the foundation, um, the non-road project um, aims to answer five overarching questions. Here are the, uh, the five questions. The first one is about factors, either risk factors and, uh, or uh, protective factors for driving safety during the process of aging. And the second is really about uh, the effects of medications. Definitely medication use is a risk factor, but uh, um, because medication use is so common and it's so complex, so we, uh, the foundation wanted to really focus on the individual medical conditions and medic uh, medications. And the third one is about self-regulation during the process of aging. Say, how drivers cope with the declines in their uh, physical and cognitive functions during the uh, process of aging. Um, that pro that, that's a really, uh, really hot area of research already, but uh, longitudinal data like this would be extremely important. And the fourth one is about technology, say the prevalence and use perception of in-vehicle technologies and uh, vehicle adaptations in those old um, ADOP drivers. And the finally, but actually very importantly, as the after um, driving career or uh, driving cessation, what are the determinants um, of driving cessation? And what kind of health consequences um, driving cessation may be associated with in old adults after they have stopped driving? Say their alternative transportation modes and, and how well their transportation needs are might and what kind of measurable health impacts driving cessation may have um, on those old adults. And the design is uh, a prospective cohort study with multiple study sites. In this one, we have five study sites. It's a fixed birth cohort approach uh, with annual um, follow-up, so repeated measurements. Um, the follow-up period at this time is for at least uh, two years, and, and uh, the foundation is committed to extending the follow-up of the project, maybe for another five years after the two years of follow-up. And uh, the follow-up involves both active follow-up by serving and bringing the individuals, participants, uh, for assessment, as well as passive follow-up through, say, uh, driving records, medical records, and so on. And here is the conceptual framework we used. If you look at the questions and mission and so on, basically we use the standard model of IPT merge um, to measure the exposures. Um, in the standard model of IPT merge, all the diseases, injury, and adverse health outcomes are the interplay of three elements. A host, which is the driver here, and environment, which could be natural environment, could be social environment, social economic environment, and policies, and so on. And the third would be agent or vehicle. So we are covering all those three elements. Um, and the, the outcomes could be categorized into four general groups, driving safety measures, such as crash risk, violation risk, and so on, and driving cessation, um, and alternative transport, and then health outcomes. As you know, health outcomes 
uh, driving, um, driving safety and so on, those could be measured in many different ways. But we're going to use objectively collected empirical data to measure those outcomes. And in a longitudinal project like this, the most important part is to really shed light on the process, on the mechanisms, the dynamics, and uh, the consequences um, during the process of aging. And uh, if you do a cross-sectional study or retrospective study, you can't have data to really look at the, pro the aging process. Um, and here are the five study sites, which include, um, say, geographic regions um, and uh, pop catchment populations that qu are quite diverse. Um, Cooperstown, New York, as a rural, um, primary white um, agricultural region. And uh, Baltimore is most African-Americans. And uh, uh, Ann Arbor is typical, maybe suburb, um, and mixed diverse um, ethnic and racial groups. Denver is um, more Hispanic, um, but it's an urban um, population. And San Diego um, is more Hispanic and, uh, and also as uh, as, um, as urban population. So those five states, um, the size are scattered in five different states across um, both east and west coasts. And uh, we do have two in the middle, say, um, Ann Arbor and Denver. And here are the inclusion criteria. I don't want to go through the, the um, details. Um, the age at um, baseline would be 50, uh, 65 and, uh, and to 79 years. And when we follow them for five years or longer, then we'll have data for the old, old uh, adults. And uh, we try to recruit relatively healthy, active drivers. So that's the, the bottom line. <coughs> you need very really uh, capable, experienced, and committed um, PIs to work on this kind of long-term project. Fortunately, we do have a very good, um, very talented uh, set PIs. Uh, in California, we have Dr. Linda Hill. You will hear from her. And in Colorado, we have Dr. Baez and Dr. DGCP. Um, in Maryland, we have a very talented young junior faculty, Dr. Vanya Jones. Um, Michigan, we have Dr. Mola and Dr. Ryan, and uh, in Cooperstown, New York, we have Dr. David Strogaz and uh, Dr. Thelma Inans. And uh, we do have a data coordination center, which um, is responsible for the development um, of the web-based data systems and also all the data management. My time is up under, it's a, this is a grade for enroll, target enrollment. For each site, we um, aim to enroll 600 participants, and the total will be 3,000. And there are the two matrix variables used to, uh, to monitor the, the enrollment age and sex and the three age groups. We try to use um, sort of um, a evenly distributed matrix, but uh, that's the target. Uh, it's going, not going to happen. Um, my time is up, but um, you will hear more details about um, those in individual aspects of the project. I'll just show you where we are right now. Um, this is a weekly, the most recent summary statistics. We do weekly reports to uh, and distribute to the individual size. And uh, by uh, September 8th, last Thursday, we have enrolled a total of 2140, um, 2140 participants. Um, on average, we're enrolling about 40 uh, participants per week. And the target is to hit 3,000 by the end of the year. At this time, we project maybe a two-month delay. Okay, thank you very much.